I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, everything is stabilized and yeah, yeah. no problem. Okay, talk well, to you later. Yes, right. and I look Good. forward to seeing you. We should get this show on the road right away. Thanks everybody for coming. My name is Marcus Miller, as most of you know. I'm the director here at the Snellgrove Gallery, and I'm very happy to be introducing Ernst Logar, who's here uh, 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 installing uh, an exhibit at Pave Arts that opens uh, this Friday. Um, Ernst Logar lives in Vienna, Austria. He studied uh, experimental design at the University of Fine Arts in Linz. Uh, transmedia Art at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. And uh, when he was working at the Generali Foundation in the uh, 90s to the early 2000s, uh, he began uh, using uh, photography, film, and sculpture, uh, and spatial installation works um, in his work, Non-Public Spaces, that he started in uh, 1998. Uh, uh, Logar was uh, uh, working with existing power relations, historical, social, cultural phenomena. He'll talk about lots of this stuff uh, uh, here. Uh, the deconstruction of social mechanisms, historical truisms. He's done lots and lots of work. He's published many books. Uh, I think what he's going to be talking about is mainly his most recent work, which has to do with uh, the oil economy, in fact, uh, Ernst was uh, uh, recently at a BAMP residency uh, entitled On Energy that was put on uh, by the Petrocultural Research Group. Yeah. Um, and before I hand it over to Ernst, I want to uh, uh, ask David LaRiviere, who's here, Director of the Paved Arts, to say a few words. Thanks, Marcus. Um, I just wanted to maybe speak to the project um, a little bit to set the table for Ernst. Um, we've been working on this project, this is probably the, the longest period of time I've ever worked on a single curatorial project. And uh, Ernst and I met uh, because we were both respectively uh, curated by Jen Budney into an exhibition called Beneath the Petroliferous Moon at the, the Mendel Art Gallery. And um, ever since that time, during on a panel discussion together, uh, we've been talking about the prospect of this exhibition um, and of doing something, of taking what Ernst was already working, already interested in uh, the petro industry, at that point in time doing a research project around the offshore drilling in the North Sea near Aberdeen, Scotland. Uh, we talked about uh, sort of turning the focus onto uh, what Andrew Nikoforik has called the world's largest capital project the uh, mining developments in northern Alberta, uh, variously known as the uh, Athabasca oil sands or the Athabasca tar sands, depending on, on who you ask. So um, I entered into, with Ernst, what I'm going to be calling uh, guerrilla curation, because uh, normally a curator doesn't really get into the weeds quite to this extent. But Ernst and I went to uh, Fort McMurray and we camped out in a workers' camp. Uh, we, uh, uh, you know, we slugged it through the, the mosquitoes and, and the chilly, chilly nights. Um, and, uh, and we had this kind of whiplash experience uh, between uh, being exposed to uh, basically, uh, you know, doing the official tours, uh, actually going to the oil discovery set, uh, the oil sands discovery center, which uh, this is a fine uh, souvenir of. And uh, yes, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but, so we, we, we went from this experience and, and really, uh, you know, absorbing a lot of the industry talking points, which are not uh, limited to, uh, a lot of it is this kind of uh, uh, breathless celebration of just the grandiosity of the project. Uh, it is uh, absolutely, and of course, this is one of the points where Ernst and I uh, sort of connected politically as well, uh, because we both have a kind of distrust, I would say, of uh, the Edward Bertinsky uh, or this uh, Helbig uh, project of, uh, of, of sort of backing up far away enough from the tar sands until it sort of turns into a, a Tapier painting or a Robert Motherwell painting or something like that. Uh, we wanted to actually get, and I think this is what we're going to see partly in his exhibition at Paved Arts, 
Ernst wants there to be an olfactory element. He wants us to not feel all of that, that, that kind of distance to feel uh, sort of a comfort level. Uh, he wants us to have that, that more direct experience. So we went from this, all of these kinds of talking points to the city of Fort McMurray itself, which I would say is more like a cone of silence, uh, this kind of moratorium on critique, uh, to a three-day uh, healing gathering on the Fort McMurray First Nations Reserve, which was this kind of um, other sort of uh, resistance, which was very interesting, very complex in its own right, um, and but also extremely felt, and I'd say that there was a, a, a discernible difference between the talking points that sort of uh, defend, de facto defend uh, the mining developments, uh, even on an environmental uh, statistical uh, stage, uh, to this extremely uh, felt experience of, you know, we helped to erect a teepee, which I've never done before. We, we took uh, uh, workshops on uh, medicine from uh, the, the land around us and uh, made uh, tea uh, from uh, muskeg and uh, but we also heard about how the food table is uh, impacted by uh, cut lines from the sag V developments something that you know I would have never even uh, thought of uh, as being a potential impact was just the mere fact that deer deal with fragmentation very well, but uh, but uh, elk do not, and that the elk are disappearing. It's only people that um, who whose uh, traditional ways of life are supposed to be protected by the Treaty 8 that was signed in that territory, uh, who uh, actually feel how uh, the food table is affected by these developments and is so in that respect it was um, a very different kind of experience and, uh, I'd say uh, we're both I think uh, it would be fair to say that we're both uh, still figuring it out for our own selves or maybe it's not something to be figured out just more uh, properly but, um, so with that I, uh, I want you to turn it over to my friend Ernst Slogar and uh, please uh, join me in, in uh, welcoming him here all the way from Vienna, Austria yeah. Uh, Marcos and uh, David, thank you for the introdu introduction. Uh, I will uh, read my paper and uh, uh, I will explain uh, what I'm going to present and later on I, uh, we can have a discussion. Um, first of all, I'd like to express my thanks for the invitation and the hospitality I have been shown. My lecture will pro provide a brief overview of my artistic methodology uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and the individual works that grapple with the thematic of um, climate change we are currently undergoing. Um, let me begin with, the, with my work, Non-Public Spaces, as an example of my working process. And then I will talk about invisible oil, which engages uh, the natural resources of petroleum and represents a central facet of my artistic work. After that, I will turn to my current project, Tar Sands, approaching an and anthropocentric site, which will be on exhibit on uh, at Bay Art Gallery this Friday. And the conclusion of my talk, I will talk about a project that I'm currently planning in cooperation with uh, the University of Applied Arts, Montan Universität Leon, that's a, a school for mining in Austria and the uh, University of Alberta with the touch date of 2018. Um, uh, Non-public spaces and invisible oil are detective works, so to speak, intended to reveal forces and elements that are normally invisible or hidden from us. Uh, a lot of my artistic works are investigative as well, but um, 
fixated on questions related to recent Austrian history, uh, especially the Austrian re resistant uh, movement uh, in the national uh, socialism. Uh, this uh, work is uh, uh, a very personal work I did. It's about my uh, home country, uh, Carinthia. It's the southern province of Austria, and uh, it's related to the uh, to the minority of the Slovenian partisan, uh, Slovenian speaking minority in Carinthia, and this was um, also a. a I would say an uh, investigative uh, project. Uh, uh, you, we can talk about this later. I, I will not present this work, but just this is, uh, I think, uh, a work which is very important um, uh, to understand my other, my other works. So this is an uh, 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 exhibition uh, uh, entitled the end of remembering uh, Carinthian partisans, and this is a, a, a space in the Austrian Parliament. I did in 2008. Um, let me begin with uh, non-public spaces. Uh, the origins of this project uh, go back to 1998, and my interest at the time in exploring spaces that govern our, our lives uh, that is to say, our everyday lives and how they are configured aesthetically. These spaces are, I, I choose, untypically accessible to the average citizen. Spaces marked um, by, um, uh, with some kind of social, economic, uh, po uh, political uh, or religious uh, significance. Uh, I be, uh, began in the Austrian capital, home to uh, so many heavily touristed uh, landmarks. Um, and quite naturally, I uh, graduated to uh, a morgue in the Viennese uh, Corona's office. This is, a, this is um, I think they, that's the space. Yeah? So I started to... Uh, I got, got interested in, in spaces we, which are hidden because of uh, very, uh, different reasons. Uh, so I, I started to explore these spaces. So this is a, a morgue and this is a, a coffin, coffin depot. <coughs> yeah. In Vienna, Vienna has a special approach to the death. There is a museum about uh, or how do you say, fu funeral museum? Okay. So they, are, it's a, they have a special approach to, the, to death. So there is a, so um, just, uh, uh, sorry. Or uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a vault of the Aus Austrian Federal Reserve Bank. Or this is a, um, how I say, uh, uh, this is part of the uh, uh, headquarter of the Austrian police. So uh, it's uh, the training to train uh, shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, rival range, it's called. Rival range, I think. So these are all spaces that are normally closed off. To yeah, the you can't enter. Uh, <coughs> so I. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, this was my first approach. Um, other spaces soon followed. What appeals to me in this work is the crossing of boundaries. In other words, the penetration into protected spaces and the direct confrontation with the governing institution that ensures these places remain uh, unseen. This is uh, uh, the central computer room of the um, it's the Austrian statistics, so where they store all the, the data of every uh, Austrian citizen. <clears throat> How easy was it to get access to these spaces? All right, this is a, I, I, I uh, applied to get access. 
So um, it's I will uh, uh, so it's about uh, I will uh, explain it in. Yeah. Um, uh, I gained entry to, the, uh, to these sounds in my capacity as an artist by navigating complex bureaucratic processes that at the beginning of this project I did not document. Later on I achieved, uh, I, I uh, archived this nego, nego this, uh, yes. Uh, in, in doing so, I realized that they are uh, of equal uh, significance for me as the photos I snapped uh, upon my arrival. For instance, I tried to record uh, a phone conversation and wherever possible make video recordings of the various stages, the pre uh, preliminary uh, research, the permission, permission process, and my actual entry into each space. The, the uh, truth uh, of uh, written correspondence, email, faxes, letters that nece necessarily emerges from the permission process is an important part of the exhibition. Uh, this is a, a arm storage of the uh, police department, so where they are store uh, weapons or other uh, equipment. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I I started to uh, to uh, um, to archive the, co uh, the, the correspondence because I I realized yeah that's very uh, very important. Uh, interesting pro uh, uh, process and, and uh, it also uh, shows something about the institution, how they deal with, with it. So what I did is I always, when this was in New York, so what I did is I always um, um, tried to get the recommendation letter of uh, the Austrian Embassy yeah. so that I, you know, like uh, so I have a good references that they they are they know uh, okay are uh, 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 that something uh, we can we could trust in. Sure. So it, it this made this made it uh, easier. But uh, yeah. so this is uh, an exhibition uh, uh, view with where I present uh, emails and. Texas. So you could get into all of these very sensitive places in Austria, but you couldn't get into the Guggenheim. Yeah, sure. Austria, <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, Austria is, you know, it's a, yeah, we, it's a small country, and uh, it's dif different. Like, yeah, to to have a show in the Parliament, I, it's, I think it's, I think it, uh, Hans Hake had one in in Berlin. But I don't know uh, in Canada if this is uh, if there is the possibility to do this. So Austria is a um, small country, and uh, but nowadays it's um, uh, more difficult because when I started this, uh, this was before 9/11, yeah. so it was like it was easy to get access. Uh, I was, uh, I say, astonished. Astonished, yeah. Yeah, that he, he, yeah, I get access to the vault or yeah. <laughs> but, but nowadays, I, um, man, this, this work I isn't finished. I want to do a book. So I am thinking of a certain uh, process, perhaps to uh, restage this, uh, uh, this um, uh, to uh, apply once again. Oh, yeah. And uh, now to see uh, uh, how it changed. Yes. Let's see. Uh, so, so this is an uh, exhibition. I, I think this was the first exhibition. It was at the University of Vienna at the art department. So what I did, I, 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 um, I was uh, yeah, interested also in the perspective. So uh, the, 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 the image get a 
strong three-dimensional uh, uh, um. so, uh, so so this is a uh, 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 um, uh, the poor uh, 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 archive the, of the the Austrian state archive so I took uh, a photo of one of uh, it was a war archive so uh, yeah I was interested to to see uh, the, an archive uh, how it looks like yeah so this this is an exhibition um, in my hometown, Klagenfurt. It's, so you see here uh, the presentation of the photographs and uh, at the table you can listen to uh, uh, telephone con conversations I recorded. Yeah, I, what I do is I, I record when I talk to a person. Uh, I think I had one with the, a very funny one with the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. So uh, what I do, I, 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 I uh, censorize the, you know, the, the voice and the name. And so you hear uh, me, uh, the conversation with a person of, of uh, the Federal Reserve. Um, the exhibition um, the exhibition will also include the visual images of these sites both small and large scale photographs in terms of uh, pictorial, pictorial uh, composition the point in these pictures is to accentuate uh, uh, the three dim dimensional uh, nature of the sites in addition to the correspondence, um, in addition to the correspondence and the photos, I also showed selected audio and video documentary material. Later on, I took the project on the road, visiting and documenting secret yet hidden zones in Paris, London, Rome, and New York. Uh, how I se select these sp specific zones doesn't uh, there to any strict gu guideline, my choices are subjective. Um, so, I sh this is uh, uh, the art storage of the Centre Pompidou in Paris. Man looks not very, I think every art storage looks like this. Or this is uh, not the Gordon Snell Grove. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the sculpture before of the Louvre. Uh, this is um, uh, an office in the. It's called Piro de Leur et Monsieur in Paris, uh, and this uh, institution are, is um, how you say is um, in charge of the uh, determination of time, weight. So uh, in this uh, institution, uh, they have the prototype of the kilogram. Or in this room, uh, 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 a scientist is, um, uh, is uh, uh, calculating uh, the universal time. So this is the place where uh, somebody is, uh, what he is, doing is he compares, uh, I think, the time of the most accurate um, atomic clocks in the world. And then uh, he is, uh, you know, there is the lip second. So uh, because the Earth rotation is not that accurate as the atomi uh, atomic time. Mm -hmm. And every two years, uh, the the atomic time has to uh, be changed because uh, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. So this is the place. Uh, yeah, I uh, was interested. I thought, oh, uh, that's the place where uh, time is made. <laughs> 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 or this is a. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 
that's the only photo I, 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 I made in, I took in, in, in New York. This is a, you know, a entrance area of the Federal Reserve Bank. So I had to, to get uh, permission to uh, take a photo in, in public space. Uh, yeah. They're, they're pretty uh, paranoid. The yeah, paranoid sure. yeah, sure, yeah, sure, they are. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, to, to, uh, I was there in 2002, yeah. after, so, uh, yeah. so I, I did a lot of telephone calls and they, yeah, it, uh, sometimes they, uh, yeah, <laughs> quite, uh, think, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and this uh, I did in London, 2005, when there were, at th this time, um, there was a, a terrorist attack in London, and then I, 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 I switched to media spaces because uh, I got, yeah, anyway, uh, so I thought I will not, uh, it's, the, the situation was very uh, emotional, and so I switched to, uh, to media spaces because at this time media was, yeah, everywhere you, uh, they were reporting about this attack, and so I tried to uh, get access to a, a media spaces. This is the TV studio of uh, BBC London. Oh, this is the, I'll say, uh, this is the, the office of the, this is uh, Financial Times. The, uh, or this is a radio studio of BBC World. And this is one of my last one. Uh, this is in the in Rome at the Vatican. Vatican yeah, yeah. is the conference room where they decide uh, who uh, becomes holy or not. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I read there is a room where they are, are discussing this uh, issues. So and then I uh, I applied to get access to other spaces uh, also. The, the room uh, where the Pope uh, uh, is uh, the, is uh, always, you know, the decided. Yeah, where he, where he uh, has schnittstelle. Officiates. Yeah. Officiates. Yeah, where he uh, is communicating with the public. Yeah, you okay. know, there is this window. So, so uh, this was the only space I, I got permission. <laughs> So uh, here are some exhibition views. This is in, uh, in uh, Keio University in Japan, in Tokyo. I had a small presentation. This is the, in Klagenfurt uh, at the Lakeside Park. It's an industri industrial, er econ uh, economical area, and they have a, a art space there. And this uh, is in, uh, in London, in Delfina Studio Trust. I had a residency and I did a small show there. So I, I now like um, to switch to the related work, uh, non, uh, Invisible Oil. This work attempts to shine a spotlight on the North Sea oil industry in Aberdeen, Scotland. Not only does this work make visible the resource of oil itself, it also highlights our dependency on it. So this is a, is a research and uh, exhibition project, project I did in, in 2008. In 2008, Pico Visual Arts Gallery in Aberdeen invited me to spend several months in, the, in town. Aberdeen is situated in north, north western Scotland and is known as the oil capital of Europe. Now they switched, switched this to uh, energy uh, capital of Europe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you see, yeah, uh, my approach at the uh, outset of my project is to do um, my research on location in order to get an uh, uh, in the immediate impression of a city, its industry, and the larger economy it is part of. I absorb this information and this uh, experience before going 
on to process um, okay, sorry. Um, and this information I uh, process and condense them into artistic works in various media, photography, video, sculpture, audio, or printing. The initial approach, like in the first such work, non-public spaces, was to obtain access to the highly restricted locations connected to the North Sea oil industry. So I began reaching out to the oil companies acti active uh, there in the hopes of securing access to their land-based facilities as well as a drilling rig out in the North Sea. I contacted, contacted uh, roughly 60 companies and putting it mildly ex extracting photography permits proved extremely difficult. I had moderate success uh, and I visited, uh, visited a handful of these spaces. By the, by the minority of the companies, especially the larger ones, um, uh, refu uh, refu refused me outright. Bared from the most important of sites of the North Sea oil industry, I shifted my focus to the subst substance um, of oil itself, um, appropriating uh, it as a medium to develop uh, various works like prints, photographs, and sculptures that reflect and reflect upon our civilization's dependence uh, on the resource of oil. Uh, I'd uh, now like to show uh, you uh, the individual works that I created over the course of this project. Uh, here are some photos of uh, Aberdeen. Uh, that's uh, center. My uh, Aberdeen is, they, they have um, these uh, granite stones there. They have a big uh, quarry. Yes. So uh, this is, uh, they say, uh, one say, it's quite a, a rough place mm -hmm. because it's somehow, uh, sometimes it's like looking, in, uh, living in a black and white movie. You like it's, you see gray houses, you know, the sky is black, just, you know, the, the there is the, the, the car, so, yeah, it's, uh, here the harbor, uh, uh, Aberdeen is, uh, our, is a key location for the North Sea oil industry, here, a map, I, uh, I, uh, I, I drew in the gallery to, to show, uh, you know, the, the red uh, lines are the pipelines. It's, a, it's so important to the English economy. Uh, it's interesting that, um, that before uh, the development of offshore oil drilling, uh, England, would, after um, the de deposing of the um, Shah of Iran, which they pretty much, uh, you know, with, placed in, in Iran um, with the overthrow of Mossadegh, uh, around that time period in the 50s, they had these events of being choked out by coal because uh, they became uh, so dependent on burning coal uh, mm -hmm. that people were dying of uh, smog in London mm -hmm. and other areas of England. So the, the, north, the, the north Shore of Aberdeen is extremely crucial uh, area to their energy security. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, Tilly drone uh, where I I lived. Yeah, well, this was a rough experience as well. Here's some photos of uh, my research. Here, this is a, a bumping station of uh, a pipeline. Here, yeah, I got stopped by the police uh, doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so I, what I, I did, I, I, I went to uh, different locations to, uh, 
to get a, my own experience about. So, um, so, okay, I will uh, now, uh, the first work, uh, Rick Sculptures, uh, these um, oil platforms were made from washed up pieces of plastic that I found on the beaches in, uh, in and around Aberdeen. They were tempor uh, temporary sculptures that I made on location and photographed with the water in the background. These sculptures were named after uh, economically disadvantaged neighborhoods in Aberdeen. In contrast to the oil, oil companies act active in the region, which tend to employ Scottish birds or geological formation to uh, distinguish the oil fields and platforms. The North Sea benchmark oil uh, verity uh, brand, for instance, derives its name from the li little seabird the brand used. In creation, in crea creating these sculptures, my interest in, in environmental a uh, question fused with issues of social justice and the poor living conditions uh, of many of Evelyn's residents. So this is, uh, our, I, I made five sculptures. So this is uh, Tilidrome, where I used to live, a residential area, our North Field, uh, Logi, uh, uh, Woodside, and Derry. So I, uh, I, I presented this uh, work as photographs. Um, the next work, uh, the, is, the title is 158.987294. Nine to eight liters. This sculptural work is uh, a standard oil drum that I had copied in plexiglass. The steel pedestal that supports it integrates the shape of the Saint Andrew's uh, sorry Saint Andrew's cross, the symbol of the Scottish flag. This dr uh, oil drum contains a barrel uh, of crude oil. The drum cap is removed. So the entire exhibition space is floated with the smell of crude oil. The point being uh, to make a normally invisible resource uh, visible both uh, to the eyes as well as another sense. Uh, it's important to note that the crude oil made uh, available uh, to me uh, fr is from uh, Venezuela, since not a single oil company working in the North Sea was willing to provide a barrel for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is um, uh, the work Deary uh, 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 Vatives. Uh, 1 to 12. In this work I have applied several layers of crude oil to paper and pressed some of the washed up pieces of plastic directly onto it, uh, like uh, stamps. This work is a symbolic experiment. Uh, it's an attempt of sorts to take these oil uh, uh, the reefed uh, industrial produced petrochemical objects back to their origins as fossils. And in the process, the uh, objects uh, leave behind shapes and pattern in the oil soaked paper that actually uh, do look something like fossils. Uh, this is the uh, three part photographic work. 
a simulation room, laboratory, and railhead. Uh, this uh, uh, three-part photo series in oiled uh, smeared uh, frames depicts uh, two uh, oil industry location, uh, a simulation room and a laboratory, and also includes a conception pho photograph, uh, photograph uh, the portrait of a man with a drilling rig on his head. As I delved more deeply into the technical processes of oil extraction, an interesting, an interesting, interesting uh, analogy uh, occurred to me involving the wellhead and the human psyche. The wellhead is uh, the interface between the oil reservoir and the oil platform. In other words, it's where a mixture of crude oil, gas, and water comes to the surface under very high pressure. And by the way, it's also the most sensitive and dangerous part of any drilling platform. Uh, the two other photographs uh, show uh, real locations of the North Sea oil industry. Uh, um, on the one hand, uh, in the simulation room, the hidden oil reservoir is uh, simul uh, simulated and visualized. In the lab, on the other hand, the initial samples taken from um, the as yet untapped um, reservoir are analyzed in order to predict how the substances below will behave when accessed. This uh, photographic work points to our unco unconscious um, minds and the hidden contents uh, of the reservoir brought to the surface by the act of penetrating uh, the drilling. In the case of the human psyche, the obvious uh, analogy offers announce, announces itself. The therapeutic process by which the things that we collectively suppress can be translated into consciousness, uh, rational understanding, and action. So this is the work reflecting oil. This work, um, uh, the first of my reflecting oil series, uh, as the next said, this is the first uh, work uh, entitled um, reflecting oil because I have another photo series. So uh, um, and this work uh, consists of a mirror built, built as a large framed plexiglass box equipped with a pump that sends crude oil pulsing through it. In this mirror of flowing oil, we simultaneously, simultaneously thank you, <laughs> encounter ourselves and our culture. Reflecting oil reminds us that our society is founded upon oil's flow. Millions of, of barrels are pumped daily through pipelines or transported on other ways. A flow that makes our contemporary living possible. And the products we uh, make end up in turn, in turn shaping us because they uh, uh, determine our daily ha habits in ways we, that we seldom directly perceive. So uh, I uh, published a book on visible oil in 2011. So um, this is a, a current work. Uh, the title is Corinthian Horizon. Uh, it's a, 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 a rig sculpture yeah, in, in a large scale. So um, this is uh, a current work which is at the moment on exhibit in my Austrian hometown Klagenfurt <coughs> um, in the Austrian province Carinthia. 
are uh, in, a, in a port or a small harbor uh, of, of the channel named Lent, uh, which connects the city center with the nearby Wörter Lake. I realized a rig sculpture uh, in large scale. Uh, the height of this platform is about 10 uh, meters. <coughs> the work on the one side is dealing with um, the environmental impact of uh, oil and plastic. <coughs> on the other hand, um, uh, on the other side, or on the other hand, with uh, I'm dealing with the political and economical situation in my hometown, our uh, home province. So this is a work where I try to um, also to um, uh, uh, deal with uh, you know with our former right-wing government. Uh, I think uh, I don't know if in Canada there was this right-wing politician Jörg Haider. I don't know if you ever heard of he. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, um, my home country is in big troubles because uh, of uh, uh, financial crisis. So uh, 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 um, uh, a large bank was uh, got bankrupt. So now uh, the Austrian state had to take over this bank and to uh, invest a lot of money. Otherwise, uh, my home country. Uh, uh, would have been bank, uh, bankrupt. So uh, I show here. You see the the that's the how do you say the of Corinthia. Normally the oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So Press. I use the uh, I see paragraphs. So what uh, you use at the at the court to for the articles. I don't know. Bills? No, paragraphs is, uh, you know, in, in law you have an article and then you have this sign with some sections. Uh, yeah, so, and uh, the, 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 uh, the Derrick, that's the, uh, the Derrick, this is a, a monument the Corinthia has uh, after the death of this politician, the Corinthian uh, uh, um, province made a, a uh, a monument, and it's two. There is a monument with two color columns, and they are connected with uh, shaking hands. So I what uh, what I did, I used uh, shredded money and plastic gloves, and the, uh, this represents the hands. So it's a, a, a humoristic approach, also yeah. to this. So yeah. and that's uh, the. The, the Corinthian horizon, so the Corinthian disaster. Yeah. So, just to under, uh, explain you uh, the background of this work. Like so many European nations uh, and in, Amer in the Americas as well, there's a great deal of uncertainty in the political uh, where where things are politically uh, right now. Yeah. So I uh, yeah I saw that so I I tried to to uh, deal with it. Yeah, it yeah. So uh, now I will talk about two works. I, I will, uh, two works uh, which will be part of the installation of in uh, Paved Art. Uh, uh, the title of the exhibition is Star Sense Appro Approaching and Procentric Sites. Um, uh, here you can see the, the billboard, uh, which is already on display. Um, um, also in, in the exhibition, um, in the installation, I'm dealing with the ongoing oil production taking place in northern um, Alberta. More specifically, uh, the environmental impact of this industry up on the resource of water and the sur surrounding landscapes and ecosystems, water feeds. This piece is based on a lengthy research in fall 2015 and summer 2016. <coughs> and unlike the works I just discussed, uh, and unlike the works I just discussed, 
the methodology uh, is not uh, of great concern. Uh, um, the words and words from my experience traveling to important oil sands industry sites around the Athabasca River, which engage both conceptually as well as experimentally the relationship between water and pitching. I will now discuss two works of mine that are part of the uh, space installation at base. This is the wor work um, uh, Oil and Water. This uh, experimental work, as I, this I showed in Vienna last December. Uh, so you, uh, this work is made up of a steel tub that contains a mixture of water, bitumen, uh, crude oil, and a number of photographs. The photos uh, are part of a documentary exploration of the social and uh, ecological problems of the oil industry in this region and were developed um, uh, the mix um, of water bitumen and crude oil uh, slowly um, um, uh, did the, uh, did the, yeah, the photographs and led to a kind of aesthetic transformation. Uh, this intensive uh, corrosive process doesn't just become visible for the viewer but also sensible to the nose. The point is uh, to stage a kind of allegory, the effects of oil extraction on nature and human life is rendered through a process of transformation that is both chemically, chemical and aesthetic. So um, you see our, our, the, the images uh, are got transformed in uh, yeah, its own aesthetic. Uh, and some of this imagery is the basis of the billboard piece. Yeah, yeah. In the billboard, I show some um, some uh, images of of this experiment. <clears throat> the second work work is a six-part series of water tanks on the interior of the uh, glass tank. You can see a representation of important locations connected to the oil industry. Uh, on a piece of glass, I have printed an image with the material bitumen. Uh, the art technique is uh, skill, screen print. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, later then I glued the glass uh, with other glass sheets together to get a tight uh, tank. The bitumen layer on the glass is facing the inside of the water tank. The transparent containers are going to be filled with water samples from various points of the Athabasca River. Conceptually, I, I'm trying here to bring together two fun, fundamental elements of the oil industry, water and bitumen, both physically and sim symbolically resulting in an art object that um, uh, represents the uh, ecological problem and identifies it in a, a descriptive way. So uh, here you see uh, these uh, uh, glass sheets with uh, our here, with the screen print, uh, screen print. So it's uh, quite a, a difficult process. The process is very, uh, uh, you really experienced the material. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you did some of this work at your band residency? Yeah, this work I did at the band residency. So I show uh, uh, six key locations of the industry like the Alaska River, Tailing Pond, uh, uh, 
a pipeline. So uh, this is my la uh, last work, uh, which is uh, currently in the design phase. Yeah, uh, it's um, and uh, it's a continuation or an elaboration of my invisible oil project from 2008, from the invisible oil. Yeah. Uh, this is a col collaborative work that brings together artistic and academic institution that uh, uses art in an experimental way to general uh, to generate more uh, visibility around the natural resource of oil. This will include uh, an examination of Vienna's uh, oil and natural gas gas infrastructure and 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 one side will be used as a public space. Um, uh, and there will be an uh, interface uh, with the public uh, space. Uh, uh, there will be a, uh, will involve the construction of a gas station in the heart of Vienna and uh, will function as a laboratory of artistic research. Now here I, I show a, a very interesting uh, gas station. It's located in the in the former in the building former building of the Austrian Stock Exchange. Uh, so it's <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Now, uh, Vienna is also interesting because there is the the OPEC our OPEC, yes. the OPEC center. Oh, yeah. Great. So. Um, and also the the how to say the the ener energy uh, from the United Nations the the Central Energy uh, Office. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, the gas station is a place where fossil fuels are experienced as both a source of energy and as a signifi signifier of individual mobility. These only present sites where our vehicles are loaded with fossil fuels are uh, in effect the place where our engines and desires and intentions attached to them are fueled en masse. The site uh, will be a temporary center of artistic knowledge creation around the oil infrastructure in Vienna. The central object of uh, research is the uh, invis invisibility or visibility of all aspects of fossil fuel industry around Vienna, like uh, rigs, uh, uh, pipelines, pumping stations, oil banks, control centers, and uh, there is uh, also a refinery <coughs> close to Vienna. Also important to this project is the in inclusion of the local ge uh, geologic history that have evolved through the oil reservoirs um, of Vienna Basin. We have also small oil reservoirs in Vienna. Uh, this uh, pr uh, project is planned uh, to be found founded by the Austrian Science Fund. Um, yeah, so I'm at the end of my presentation and um, thank you for this opportunity and I, uh, I look forward to answering any questions. So sorry about my pronunciation. But I hope you, uh, you I understand you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick, it's a simple question about the first body of work. Um, and because of this need to get permission, written permission to have access to locations, did you find that hampered or restricted what you could do? Or did you just find ways of, uh, and, and I mean not one project, but, but because each project will inform the next project, yeah. That you know that um, that 
did you find that you were going through some editorial decisions that you may not have done if you did not require to get permission? You know, so it's, do you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a kind of a process, because permission is in place, it's a kind of censorship, potentially, unless you can be clear enough that you refuse that for each project, and then if there's consequence for the future, you live with the consequence for the future rather than modifying what you're doing in the present project. Oh, I hope I, I, I got your question. But <coughs> um, uh, sure, this proce proce it was a, a process uh, which uh, ch uh, changed uh, through my uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, but it's always in my work that I, 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 I it's a continuous pr uh, process, and I, uh, 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 so uh, in this uh, work I, I really made a lot of changes because then I, re first of all I, I just went to these places, uh, took a photo. Then I uh, I experienced that uh, it's very interesting the, the correspondence with the institution also the 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 the, uh, the history or the meaning of the institution so it's an ongoing uh, 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 process and I think uh, man I I want to. Uh, Finish this uh, non-public spaces work, uh, and uh, now I, I, like I mentioned before, I am thinking of, about what to, how to change this pro process of, with uh, the experience I made, and uh, uh, to get. Uh, Sometimes the, my, the point isn't clear for me, or I'm not aware uh, why I'm doing this. So I, and then I, uh, but uh, then I come to a point where I say, okay, I'm, I'm now at, I, 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 got the, uh, I got the main point I'm interested in. So I, it could, so also the exhibition chain, the different exhibition are uh, um, are also uh, shown in different ways. Yeah, not a strict a concept uh, because then I realized, oh yeah, uh, uh, it's not working like this. So I, I yeah, so it's an ongoing pro process. I I don't have uh, also the uh, what I mentioned that I. I had no uh, strict conce uh, uh, concept of uh, which uh, places I'm uh, I w I am choosing. Yeah. But uh, it was when you ask permission. Yeah. Do they attach any conditions to you? Ah, uh, yeah. Some some I had to some institution uh, I had to uh, sign or uh, that I. I I'm not allowed uh, to publish it. I have uh, one uh, uh, of the uh, uh, Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Sorry. So I had to sign that I I have to ask for uh, permission to show it, and I have to uh, uh, I have to uh, the credits of the of the architect, uh, with, which one is somehow for this kind of image is nonsense because uh, it's an image of a uh, storage with you know like industrial uh, furniture which you know it's <laughs> every, so uh, it's not a uh, something very spe uh, uh, a special spa space of this uh, architecture yeah? but anyway I, I had to sign it this was uh, the condition to to get the permission to do this. well you also talked about in your presentation about the pre-9-11 uh, yeah. and then switching your focus after the 7-7 attacks in London to the media. So that, yeah. that in a sense is a, 
is yeah. a response yeah. to the changing conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, it also it, it just comes to my mind that even in terms of our encounter of doing a tour of the Suncor plant, <coughs> that we had to uh, sign a contract uh, with the, mm -hmm. the, the tour, and Ernst asked them for a copy of the contract, and I looked at the person's face uh, who was receiving this question, like, may I have a copy of the contract? Because you like to keep the documentation. Yeah. Yeah. And they were just completely astonished. It was like the first time they've ever heard that. You want yeah. a copy of the contract? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, people uh, or institution or companies, they want to control uh, yeah. sure. uh, uh, the images you are so uh, w the circulation of images. So they don't want an image which is not part of their uh, uh, cooperative identity. Or yeah. So part of the contract was no video. Um, I was securely taking video the whole time with my iPad pressed <laughs> up against the window of this tour bus. But Ernst had his video camera out to the, in the bright of day, just like completely taking everything in. And the tour, no, no. tour guide woman was just like, uh, sir, um, yeah, you know, you're not supposed to take any video, but you kind of wore her down in the end, I thought. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now this is related to, uh, you know, I would say, uh, to my political... Uh, uh, Identification. Yeah, now to my uh, history about uh, the partisans and uh, my the, the history of my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, and also the I'm uh, my family a uh, member of the Slovenian-speaking minority in South Austria. Austria and during during the Second World War or in the also uh, after the first. World War, uh, yeah, now there it started a, a process of uh, stigmatization against this minority, and in the Second World War, the uh, Slovenian-speaking uh, Corinthians, they were a lot were families were deported, and then there was a uh, then they uh, when they. The sons of this of this family they found out that neighbors or family members were deported by the Nazis. They uh, they they were uh, uh, in duty for the Wehrmacht, but then they uh, switched to the uh, changed uh, to the Yugoslavian partisans, and so there was a guerrilla war in South. <laughs> and so uh, so uh, that's. And my family is affected by this, yeah. And so I think that's also a, a one of my, uh, I say, so my, uh, so my motivation, motivation mm -hmm. to you know to do political work to so to provocate uh, institutions to penetrate these sites. Yeah, I think. But before I. I before I uh, start with non uh, before I did this uh, partisan work, uh, I didn't know about my history. I because my family uh, they didn't speak about it, and I found out. I did some research by myself, and I found out uh, that my grandfather was executed because he was collaborating with the partisans. And my, my grandmother's uh, brothers were uh, partisans. I didn't know before, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. <coughs> uh, I think it's it's uh, also I would say it's a unconscious uh, process that I started with these spaces. And then uh, in I think s seven years later, I I uh, worked on the. Uh, a partisan project. So um, I think that's my motivation also to uh, uh, to do uh, this kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, between our trip in 2015 and August of 2015, and then when you returned in August of 2016, 
There was the other major event that also changed uh, the um, conditions were the fires in uh, Fort McMurray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, there, uh, I think maybe uh, I'll put that in a question form and just ask you how you uh, experienced that uh, change. Yeah. Our man, uh, David, uh, told, uh, uh, spoke about our experience in, in fall 2015. And in uh, last July, I, I went to Fort McMurray again. And uh, yeah, uh, due to this new situation, I also um, uh, I uh, and uh, you know this very s sensitive situation. Um, yes. So I I, I didn't. Uh, 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 created or uh, uh, some provocative work because when we were there, yes. we uh, we uh, did a sculpture. We we a uh, picture man that is scale scroll, and so what we did we uh, collect all the garbage and. Uh, and uh, tailing pond. Yes. And we uh, built a huge uh, uh, man, man, they say, uh, and we put it uh, in, in the middle of a uh, traffic circle. Yeah. <laughs> in the most yeah. pro high profile yeah. place. Yeah, in the, at the entrance of Fort McMurray. So I was, I, I w at first I thought when I go, go back, I uh, would like to do uh, more of these uh, sculptures. But, yeah, but you know, I sure I I could, couldn't do this. I you know I, the situation I was yeah. So I I I uh, went to see uh, some sites, uh, some uh, areas which were affected by the uh, wildfire, and I thought. To, so uh, what I did, I uh, I uh, focused on the. The resource of water, yeah, and uh, did some research um, uh, last June on water and uh. mm -hmm. um, the uh, these these bitumen. They're sort of these crude scarecrows that's just made with wire frames and this this orange plastic drawn around them. They're placed around tailings ponds, which are. To call them ponds is a bit of a misnomer. They're as big as lakes. They're giant. Um, and there's these events where waterfowl will just touch these tailings ponds. And there's such high arsenic content and so many uh, nauseous chemicals that these birds will just die. So these events have occurred. And the industry's response to them is to install these scarecrows, um, but also to uh, sound cannons. So it's kind of a Frankenstein environment in yeah, a way. It's strange, yeah. It's very, very strange. So Ernst, very much like your program in general, making things invisible that are visible, we did this this kind of prank, I guess, but of placing a, a giant bitumen man yeah. in the center of Fort McMurray. Yeah, this is the bitumen man is, I, I thank you for your explanation, because I, I yeah, that's, a, I would say, say as, Signifier, yes, yeah, of 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 this industry because you know they have then protect the water, the boys, the, the toxic water, they have protect from nature. Yeah, yes, it's a strange yeah. it's uh, inversion. Yeah, and the the, the mood or the in this this area is uh, yes, is that, <laughs> yeah, it's, Silence, uh, and then uh, there is this cannon. from time this cannon. And man, you can in my installation I um, at Bave, I will show a, a three-channel video where you can uh, see uh, shots of these sites with the sound. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you get an impression about the. The, the mood, or how do you say? Yes, the mood, yeah. Of this, uh, yeah, very uh, en uh, 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 anthropo 
centric sites. Yeah. This is a real, for me, uh, uh, this kind of site, yeah. which is really uh, made by a man. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, when we went on the healing gathering uh, with the First Nations people, we uh, traveled to these, um, we went to the tailings ponds, but we also went to these reclamation areas that are um, the, where uh, industry is going to restore uh, the, the nature and to be able to uh, be exposed to uh, First Nations response to these reclamation areas was very interesting as well because um, they are set up for you to celebrate uh, the, the land is coming back but for the First Nations it's an immediately appalling uh, appalling presentation uh, they, for example, they have trees that are dead, that are stuck upside down, root systems up, and they're meant to encourage birds to have places to nest because there's nothing that's going to grow at a pace to invite the, the wildlife back. So to uh, the, these people who are looking at this land who know about the complexity of like, uh, how it takes hundreds of years to develop muskeg, uh, to uh, the, the ecosystem of these of uh, the boreal forest is incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. To see that wiped and replaced with this thing, with these sort of uh, dead trees upside down, to you know, it's just like an absolute uh, uh, you know anathema, and yet. It's this presentation that's inciting our, you know, isn't it great? This kind of this kind of back. So it's a very strange paradoxical situation to be in as well. Mm -hmm. The other interpretation is death, fear, and life, because that's what it is. And nature goes hold it back into itself through death. It becomes life. So that's part of the metaphor as well. It could be interpreted on all levels. So we don't know what their message is. But you'd have to get past the artificiality layer in between, uh, because it's uh, it is a completely uh, constructed, um, you know, inter intermediary. Mm -hmm. so it, and it's completely toxic. Exactly. Yeah. I had a, it's uh, the hope and the wish I would imagine. It's mm -hmm. shocking. We just watched Metropolis in my other class mm. uh, and listened to, you know, that like 70 minutes of silence just looking at the aerial views and followed up by interviews with First Nations people. I mean, it's just completely destroyed lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's the Peter Mettler film. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, a, it's a nice piece of work. It's stunning. Actually. I mean, it's very, and this is very stunning work. Too. I, I loved your piece in uh, um, Jim Budney's show I remember. It was on the Glasgow. Yeah. Yes. I, you know, I, I visited Glasgow many times, but I'd never been aware I mean, of like, the was... ignorance about all of that infrastructure. And you know? in Aberdeen. 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 Was Aberdeen. It, sorry, yeah. Aberdeen. Yeah. yeah. And Glasgow is also very implicated in the Nazi oil. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, uh, Ernst. I'm sure Ernst will be available for uh, more intimate conversations, questions, etc. Thank you so much. And this, uh, this Friday at 8 p.m. at Paved Arts, uh, hope to see you all down there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in Patriots, uh, yeah, 424 20th Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have one that's, I have one that's not.